Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Austrian Bundesliga round number 19. On top not much has changed. All the top three top teams played a draw uh, which partly also influenced where the real action is at the moment which is the fight for the top six into the upper and the lower play of where we have five teams now within four points vying for three spots. So uh, that's where the most of the action is. And it's kind of interesting where this will go. As we'll see, the model clearly has favorites uh, for that, which are the current top three. But I think there is a chance that this may go the other way, especially since the two teams on the outside looking in actually got big wins, whereas two of the other three didn't. So this might be uh, very interesting to watch for the next three rounds. For me, from a last perspective, again, no win so far this year. Um, it's a little bit annoying because if you would have gotten the two wins that were definitely in there, you would be very much in touching distance to the top two and you might actually be in for a real fight for the championship. I'm not saying that Lask is there or should be there yet. I think Salzburg and Sturm both are better teams, but there would have at least be the chance. But hey, at least you didn't lose in Hartberg, which was well in there as well. Now, beside that, we also had a record being broken, the fastest ever goal ever scored in the Bundesliga. And it was a real, real weird one. But we have to talk about that as well. But I want to start this review video in Vienna uh, with a big win for Austria, Austria win against Alltag, an Alltag team that statistics show are definitely underperforming in front of goal. They should have way more goals, which actually meant they would be right there in the fight for the top six. So this is a team dangerously, um, you know, dangerous if they would get it together, if they would convert their chances. It's a well-built team. Yes, they had a big re remote. There's good work being done. The problem is that now they might actually also get involved into the fight against relegation if things are not going their way and there we have to see whether the nerves will hold. But overall I think this is a, a dangerous team and Austin Aust Aust had their hands with them. They took a 2-0 lead just before the half which was already a little bit too high from the way that the game uh, went. Then when Vucic can send off with a straight red card, um, the game completely tilted to its altar. They get a goal back through Gegeba and then it was just Austria Vienna hanging on, but hanging on for three really huge points that moved them within a point of the top six spot, which is what they are all uh, aiming for. Austria Vienna, if you haven't uh, known yet, is in serious financial trouble. They are, of all the teams that are currently in the Bundesliga, probably the one that is most in danger of losing their playing license. So uh, finishing in top six and playing against uh, big name opponents will increase their revenue for sure. Also a little bit the media attention to them. So um, watch this space. Uh, Austria Vienna not, not making it might have long reaching consequences there as well. Uh, then we had the little matter of Blauweiss Linz against Salzburg. Uh, and remember, Blauweiss Linz probably have pulled up the biggest upset of the, of the season by beating Salzburg away from home back in the fall. This time it seemed to be going the complete opposite way because the fastest goal of the Bundesliga ever was scored by Peter Ratkov after six seconds on a kickoff of Blauweiss Linz. Kickoff played back to a defender and a goalie. The defender leaves it for the, for the goalie. Looked already revealed and he just yanks it forward and Radkov blocks it into the opposing net. The problem is, on kickoff, Radkov was already in the opponent's half. So it shouldn't have counted, but this was not the case for VAR, so there you go. Uh, interesting enough though, uh, Maranda after 12 minutes already equalized for blau Linz, and then it was the game that everyone expected. blau Linz keeping it tight on the back, Salzburg not being able to break, to break them down, Salzburg have been They've been looking good against Sturm, they've been looking very efficient against Lask, but those are all opponents that are a little bit more open than Blauweiss Linz. They really had trouble breaking them down. Um, there was a red card very, very late on where uh, probably Salzburg would have hoped, hoped a little bit sooner, but overall Blauweiss Linz get a very, very credible draw against Red Bull Salzburg in their new home, home stadium. They're actually uh, quite the daunting opponent, has, as we said. And if you take out the 
first few rounds, blah, blah, with lanes actually would also be up there in the fight for top six, but with a really, really bad start to the season. Uh, that is not in the cards. I don't think this is a team that will go into relegation fight. Then the other team that is on the outside looking in got the expected win over Tirol. A Tirol team that had also a bad start to, to the season, you know, losing at home to Austria Lusna, which is the uh, only team that Austria Lusna has probably a realistic chance of catching. Um, and now they lose big 4-1 uh, to Wolfsburg through Bayo and Boyakchi, uh, really um, combining well. Valo scoring the first two goals, both assisted by Boboakchi. He assists the third one also uh, through Sim Timmerman and Diasic makes it a 4-1. Yes, Okung Boa pulled one back in the 75th, but it was never really ha happening there. Whatever I think is that Tirol, who also had a bad start to the um, false part of the season, they are very well, well aware that whatever they get now might not look good on paper, but I think you need to really get it rolling once the relegation playoff starts and I, th I actually think that they are a good, good, uh, good enough team to uh, survive that as well. Speaking of relegation battle, Oscar Lucena, you know, beating Tirol. Uh, it was interesting to see what will we do against the Klagenfurt team that is also fight, fight, fighting for top spot. Well, what they did is what they did already against Tirol, keeping it extremely tight and defensive. And they showed a pass map at halftime where uh, basically there was a banana in midfield for Klagenfurt who had over 400 passes in the first half alone. And as soon as Lustner got the ball, they lost it again, but kept it tight and so it was still the banana shape. However, through the one good attack by Kla Klagenfurt, Karweiner then can put away the um, go-ahead goal and it's 1-0 and at that point... Lustner had lost it because they don't have, have to miss, Kavana even missed a penalty uh, in the fog of uh, Bregenz, which is kind of weird. Yes, it is still winter, but I didn't expect it so far because most of Austria was a sunny day, but I guess in the far west of Austria it was not. So Klagenfurt get a big win, which actually means they moved now in fourth space and actually looking also quite safe already for the top six spot. Uh, great work that Peter Packold has been doing there. And then with the matter of Hardware against Lusk, frustrating game. For 15, first 15, 20, 20 minutes, Lusk were really absolutely dominant, creating chances. Of course, there was the big downer that our best player, Robert Schul, who is scoring all the goals more, more or less, uh, could, could have played because uh, he got sick. But Moses Uso, Hits after four minutes the crawl crossbar. After eight minutes, he scores. However, Lubicic uh, on the deep ball from uh, Stoic, Stoic, which was marginally offside. And so Uzo's goal does not count. Uh, then I think there was another one. And then the game, Hartberg got it under control. Uh, weirdly enough, although Lask were the more dominant team, Hartberg had a little bit more of the ball, which tells it was all quick transition attacks that Lask had. And the two teams more or less neutralized themselves. Uh, at the beginning of the second half, uh, Eck actually the first chance fell to Hartberg, but then Uso scores again. This time he was even clearer offside. And again, not much ha ha happening except for a lot of VAR. I mean, VAR already had for two offside goals. Then there was a uh, yellow card for Komposch that could have been a red card. I think that was more a red card than the one that was being given, where Berisha actually goes in for the ball with a really dangerous tackle, and at the same time the Akite is then stepping on him, but it was more or less in the moving motion towards the ball, and that gets him sad off. Honestly, I did not feel this was right, and with the man more, unfortunately, whatever they might try, Lask couldn't do it, and Hartberg and Lask nil-nil. It's a draw that doesn't really help any anyone. It doesn't move Lusk further up. Uh, it doesn't give Hartbeck a whole lot more safety. Although, yes, you have three points ahead of the um, um, uh, seventh spot. So at least that gives you some or something. But uh, it was an ugly game. It was not an easy game for the referee. Uh, it, Yeah, that's, I think, all that I can say about that. But it's a little bit frustrating because I think... Especially with the beginning of EHF, you have to convert your chances from the last perspective. And you might actually come out with a win and you close the gap to 
up front. And the closing gap was also what I think Sturm Graz was uh, aiming for because with the win over Real Rapid at home after the great performance against Slovan, you really would have thought, yeah, you can go level with Red Bull Salzburg. Salzburg. And uh, Lavalle duly scores very early on from a Horvath core corner. Look, look, a little bit, bit, bit weird, but it was similar like last cutback. Sturm were better at the first. Then Rapid got the game under control, it got a little, little bit even in the 41st minute they equalized through a long free kick, uh, very well well taken, basically went straight in, wonder how the wall and the goalie didn't actually go for, for that, but hey, so so beat in the second half, Sturmgratz, do not have, have, have to miss, it was actually a really wild ending where Sturm would have had the chances, but were always a little bit too hastily uh, trying to play play them. And in the end, it ends with a 1-1, one, one, which again means Rapid now are down to six spots. One point ahead of Austria Vienna, who they will play next round in the Derby, uh, which is the big one going for, or for forward. So if we look at next round, Lask have a rather Wolfsburg, again a team, a team where it means more for them. Hartberg against Altach. Um, might be a tight one as, as as well. So I'm looking also for the talks with whereas Austria Klarenfurt against Blau Blau Slings, you would actually favor Klarenfurt in that one. But the way that the season have been has been going so far is that uh, there have been a lot of draws. I think nothing is really gelling yet for these teams. We also see that Sturm and Salzburg, the two title contenders, uh, play against the relegation candidates. So I would be curious to see what will happen there. But the big one, of course, is the Derby in Vienna that has been rather swinging the purple side of things. So watch that space. I actually think it will end also in a draw. Any case, that's it from me from the Austrian Bundesliga. Please let, let me know what you thought about the action. If you have any kind of questions, please drop a line below. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!